Hi, and welcome to uh, MyFest 2022. And this is the Open Learning Journey track, where we're now in our second week of um, really they've just been fantastic sessions all of them last week there were there were four different sessions and this week we have i think six going on um uh and we'll we'll get into today's session in just a second um the the focus this week at on the open learning journey track is on tools and platforms for open learning and so yesterday we had a kickoff session and a hands on open learning tools session focused on edtech books um today we're in another hands on um session focused on press books with our guest amy song and we'll, we'll uh, welcome amy in just a second uh, coming up later in the week we also have additional hands-on sessions focused on uh, um, other tools like um, libra texts and uh, oer commons and hypothesis um, there may even be another surprise session added who knows it's 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 the emergence of my fest happening as we speak um while we're um while we're participating in today's session, feel free to use the chat. I sort of think of it as an old colleague of mine at Hypothesis, Jeremy Dean used to say, uh, I think of the, the chat as a kind of annotation on top of on top of the meeting that we're having. And so it's it's a place where we, a shared space where we can all kind of have meta commentary about what's going on and then also um, get involved in, in the discussion itself. Of course, this is a meeting format, not a webinar format. So everyone has the ability to turn on their camera and or microphone. Um, I would. I think it works better if everybody stays muted unless they're actually talking. Um, you're all probably Zoom veterans at this point, so you, everybody's probably already there, and you come in muted. I think to the meeting anyway. Um, so, uh, but when we move to the discussion discussion part, especially, uh, we want to invite everyone to actually. Um, show their face if they wish and, and also speak. So, um, but we're gonna start off first by um, having a little bit more in-depth conversation with our guest, Amy Song, who um, is actually part of the Pressbooks team. And I'm actually meeting Amy just for the first time today, which is, is a special honor. And I thought that I might first ask Amy to kick us off um, by asking, like, how did you get involved in press books and, and open education or open learning tools? I mean, we've all had our own strange journeys, and I, I bet you're, well, not always strange, sometimes interesting and fun, but I bet you've had your own, and I'm, I'd be interested to hear more about it. Yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is Amy. Thank you so much to my fast and Nate and, and everyone involved for having me. Uh, I think all of you are new faces, which is really, really great because I typically tend to meet people through the Pressbooks Avenue, but this is a really awesome way to meet uh, so many new faces. So um, thanks for having me. Uh, to answer that question, I, it's actually a funny sort of path that I fell into. I didn't study anything related to publishing or English or anything like that or information studies that University. I actually studied chemistry, and um, I did some odd summer jobs here and there. I did a lot of support stuff, um, and uh, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And then a job posting at Pressbooks came up, and here are all of these values that I've been holding very dear to me um, personally, of values of uh, of equity. And I, I was really passionate about the stuff that Pressbooks was working on and, and the values that they stood for. Uh, so I. I applied to the job with my support background and earnest <laughs> and honesty about um, why I'm interested at the organization and I joined Pressbooks and here I am two years later. So I'm I'm really I, I, I miss science and as as Riss is saying in the chat, um, I, I definitely miss chemistry from time to time, but I'm happy to take a new angle at uh, at, at science and and, and 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 open pedagogy and I'm, I'm I get to have conversations about open with so many different people at this point about all of their different disciplines. So even though I do have times where I do miss uh, doing a lot of math, I, I'm, I'm very grateful to be here today. <laughs> you miss doing a lot of math. Well, it's really uh, special <laughs> I, to hear. I do love math. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hobby of yours, right? Yeah, um, that's just a side hobby. <laughs> It's really great to have another chemist in the audience um, because I think uh, we have some other chemists here who would love to say hello, Rissa. I was going to say, like, how do you not love math and do chemistry? Seriously, Nate, come on. <laughs> I am, I'm hardly a chemist, I would say, but I appreciate the title. <laughs> Yes, well, um, there's a lot of chemistry geeking out that happens. Um, I don't know if you've ever met Rissa before. Um, I but have not. Oh, Rissa is, I would, I think of as the leading light in um, 
in uh, uh, chemistry and open. Um, maybe maybe you have some other names too that you think about, Rissa. Um, but I, it's very important that you guys get connected then. Thank you, Nate. I'm just gonna say thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. I have no idea what I am or what I'm not at the moment. Yes, none of us do. I'm really. feeling very liminal. Great. Well, and Arissa is also uh, heavily involved in the um, co-creation of the MyFest. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I don't even know what to call it. Experience, let's say. At any rate, well, that's that's a really interesting pathway, Amy. Um, and so I know that you've brought to us today a bunch of thoughts and information about the Pressbooks platform. Um, and so I want to make sure that you have enough time and room to kind of uh, present what you wanted to present, and then we'll, we should have time after that to move to some discussion with the other attendees here. So I'll let you take it away from here. Um, and you know, I'll keep be keeping an eye on chat and also um, folks might be pi piping in here and there with further clarification. So we'll just, I'll just pipe, I'll pipe up or someone else will if, uh, if there's a question to answer in the middle of it. So you don't have to try to focus on too many things at once. Yes, thank you so much. And if you do have any questions, feel feel please feel free to leave them in the chat. Um, and there is no formal workshop component of this, but I will show you if you are interested in some of the stuff, some of the things that I'm showing you today. Uh, you can either get in contact with me, or there's a site where you can go and test some of these things out. So that's my little bit of an introduction, and we can get started from here. All right, thank you so much for joining us today, everybody. I really appreciate it. Um, today's session is about finding and remixing OER, a practical introduction. So this session is split up into two parts. Uh, the first part, I'm gonna show you how you can find uh, and remix OER, uh, how to find the OER that you're looking for and how to evaluate it to see whether or not it suits your needs. And then the second portion uh, will be on Pressbooks. Can I get a thumb? Can I get a hands up from everyone who knows what Pressbooks is, or, or a little thing in the chat? If you don't know what Pressbooks is, uh, you can also let me know. Um, but it looks like there are a few people who know what it is. So um, great, so awesome. So it looks like a lot of you do know what Pressbooks is. So for a little bit of background about me. Prospects is a platform where you can create and uh, publish your content in a variety of different formats. You write on one platform and it produces an interactive webbook for you, a PDF, an EPUB. It does it all from your one place that you've written from. So it really, uh, you have full creative liberty over the processes uh, of your book. And, 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 and uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can work on that book to fit your needs. So I'll be showing you some of that today. So firstly, I want to cover a little bit about finding OER. So especially if you're new to OER, chances are you're probably wondering, where do I find content? So when you're doing this, it's important to think about what you're looking for. So think of this as an opportunity to think beyond what you're accustomed to using and ensure that resources are the best match for your course content and students. One of the best parts about OER is that you can really remix and customize the book to fit your needs. So ask yourself, you know, if you have been using a traditional, let's say, French textbook, are you looking for something more interactive or did you find that book limiting? Um, what are you looking for when you're looking for your new, why, why are you on the hunt for a new, for new content? and also using a set of requirements to compare against. So if an ideal resource existed, if I could create my dream book, what would it look like and how could I get there? And the last thing is, I'm sure some of you or many of you are librarians or instructional designers, they are sort of like the unsung heroes of the academic world and to, ref and to consult them and other people who have also been involved in open, they are sort of your best resources to refer to. So um, referring to them when you're looking for resources uh, is great. So if you're wondering where you can find OER, if you don't want to do that, you know, all the big asking big questions beforehand, you can also just go and take a look. So there are so many different places where you can go and look for content. I know some of them uh, have even presented on their platforms this week and they have a great list of books. Um, we have our Pressbooks directory, which we colloquially, colloquially call our baby uh, because <laughs> the, it's, we worked on it for a long time and it's, it's uh, it's a very prized part of our organization and there's over 3,500 um, books that you can read for free completely online. Most of them are openly licensed as well. And you can also refer to a variety of different places. All of these sites have quote unquote uh, free and accessible 
um, books that you can go and look at. Um, and there's some other resources down here. So H5P activities, which are open source interactive activities that you can put into your books, as well as um, websites like Fed Simulations, which have different media activities as well that you can incorporate into your book. And a little bit about the Pressbooks directory. Um, this is linked, so if you want to click on that, it will take you to the Pressbooks directory. We also have a Pressbooks librarian who is actually a librarian who has his MLIS degree. Uh, and his name is Travis, and he's amazing. And he puts together collections for us that are really wonderful. So if you're, uh, in addition to all of the other books in the Pressbooks universe, if you're teaching language learning, high enrollment, open education, interactive OER, or healthcare, these are places that you can start from and look at the book that he's purposefully curated onto that list. Um, and in my demo, I'll show you how you can use the content in these books to localize the books to fit your need. But I wanna show you that there, I will take you through the directory and show you that there are a bunch of books where you can, the, the books that you can look at and, and see which ones fit your needs. So once you've found a couple of books that you think you might be interested in, you might want to look at how to, uh, to, to assess them before you actually start using them for your book. And some important things to consider are to, to, to conduct an evaluation. So considering really important aspects that we all obviously hold dear to our hearts, like, like accessibility, the peer review status, um, the ancillary materials associated with the book, Obviously, probably the most important one is the license to remix. That should probably be at the top, actually, um, because that is a actually limiting factor as opposed to all of the other ones, which are obviously uh, very important uh, considerations to make. Um, the diversity of authors, which is obviously very important. Um, if you're going to care about accessibility and peer review status, why not also incorporate um, the uh, importance and plurality of voices? Uh, also things like inclusive images, icons, illustrations, multimedia, um, and skimming through the rest of the book and seeing how the overall book has been tied together. Also keep in mind that there are, there's, so long as license permits you to do so and you're willing to put the work into the book, you have the opportunity to include the diversity of authors. You have the ability to make that book more accessible as well. So, so long as the license permits you to do so, you should be able to take that book and make it fit your own needs. And the next is conducting an in-depth evaluation Obviously, all of my slides have a big asterisk associated with them. You don't have to do all of these or any of these, but obviously this is an important part to making sure that your book is a success. So once you evaluate, you, 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 you'll have a list of resources to, to more thoroughly review. So considering the reviews from adopters and conducting a read through of resources. So I provided three links for you here that allows you to sort of uh, refer to when you're when you're evaluating the OER and determining whether or not it can suit your class and suit your pedagogical needs and thinking beyond the sh sheer raw content that's in the book um, what what do you need to succeed overall right so if you have just the book the book doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be successful it might lower the cost of your students not buying a hundred dollar textbook but if you want full success in your class all the way you know, what kind of technology or platform is best suited for your needs? You know, if it's, um, if it's a proprietary, if it's a proprietary journal, which is why, not why I'm assuming you're in this session today about open, but if that is something that suits you, you know, does the technology that you have that's provided for you by your institution, will that sufficiently do what you're, what you're looking for versus you're looking for an open textbook that you want to remix with 40 of your students, that's going to look slightly different. So these are really important considerations to ask. And also lastly, the age old question of resources that you actually need when you are trying to remix the book. So if you're looking to start like a smaller version and you're okay with working on it all by yourself, that's gonna differ than, you know, if this book is having a massive, huge launch at your institution and they're trying to make, you know, big noise about it. Does that mean you need a copywriter? Does that mean that you need an editor? All people who you might have to pay or compensate in some sort of way. So having these considerations in mind will set you up for success. And then lastly is a little bit about adapting and remixing OER. So I'm moving through these fairly quickly. Uh, because the demo portion is going to be a larger portion, um, but uh, these are just some guidelines that I'm building to for that demo. Uh, 
So this is sort of what I really want to focus on, which is starting to remix your own OER. So going beyond the write, edit, and review criteria is super important. So like I said earlier, adding media elements like HFP activities, vet simulations, even images, videos, audio files. Um, it's a great opportunity to make your book very immersive. And this idea of localizing your text is also really important. So making sure that there, are, you know, if you have brought over a book that you want to reuse, making sure that, you know, there isn't a chapter in there that has nothing to do with your class or, or making sure that you edit it to make sure that it fits the needs of your class is, is obviously very different, is, is, uh, is super important to consider. And also recognizing uh, some of the community aspects. So um, gathering a sounding board and advice. So if you're completely new to open and open is very new at your institution, uh, having conversations with other people about how you can, you know, forming a learning community and, and, and talking about how you can get started with your open project and relying on other people um, I know that lots of people are, you know, uh, very willing to take it, take that challenge on, on their own, but also recognizing that there are people who are willing to talk to you about uh, different approaches on how to get into open and how to, um, how to uh, edit your book to fit your needs. All of that is, is very important. Um, and also the sort of the melange of using a combination of resources, support, and trusting your own uh, talent to create a blend that really suits your your class and your your needs is is a very important consideration to make. So here's a really good example of it. This is a this is, an, this is a, a book called Blueprint for Success in College and Career that uh, Rebus Community posted, and then they and then eCampus Ontario took different combinations of remixed books from the original from Rebus Community, and they made it fit. Campus Ontario's needs, which is a, for those who are not familiar, a huge consortium that covers the entire province of Ontario and Canada, which is also our largest province. So no tiny undertaking at all. And it even won an award. So uh, it's a really great example. And I've included the links to that down here if you want to go and have a look at both of those things. And just um, so you know, Amy, um, folks uh, both from Rebus and from eCampus Ontario as well as BC Campus, another Canadian um, consortium, are all um, uh, have been at or are going to be at BIFEST Open Learning Journey sessions. So they'll be represented as well. Great. Um, so yeah, so this is a really great example that you can look at and uh, obviously like I said, links down there. And then some resources for adoption. Uh, this is probably, I want to say the, I don't, I want to put a, I, I don't want to say the most important slide, but uh, probably the most important when you're getting started because it's just really great to refer to. Um, so best, best practices for the evaluation, like I talked about. Um, if you're new to uh, Creative Commons licensing, um, you can click on that link. Uh, the open attribution builder from Open Washington. This is a really great tool if you want to just input your attributions, it'll build it for you. The accessibility toolkit kit from BC campus. It's like the best thing ever. We at Pressbooks, we sort of call it the Bible. Um, <laughs> and uh, it just has uh, accessibility uh, considerations for images, for links, for videos, for, for paragraphs or for text boxes, everything that you can think of. It's a great way to sort of just point to and say, hey, that's a really great reference that is practical. And then uh, this book that was written by um, Apoorva and Zoe from Grievous. This is a really great guide as well. It's a little bit of a longer read, but obviously as I wrote down here, this is a really small sample pool of resources offered as a starting point. There are so many out there. And like I said, the best people to refer to are your librarians, your instructional designers, and other people in the community at large. So if you have an opportunity to join a listserv or join a forum about talking about open, it's a really great way to get started. And the last thing that I wanted to mention here is that even though I've listed all of these different methods and ways of getting started in open and looking for the right content and answering the right questions to be able to get started off on the right foot, all of that is great. And you know, I've, I've prepared this presentation because I think it's great, but I also recognize that your time is very precious. And I can imagine all of you are very, very busy. And that sort of initial planning stage might not be uh, an intuitive use of your time. 
And I, I totally recognize that. And the most important thing is just to have the initiative to get started. The accessibility considerations, the, uh, the evaluation considerations, the peer review considerations, all of these are important, but they don't come before you, you and your desire to do this, right? So not to make this like a big speech, like a TED talk, but um, hopefully my goal for you today is if you've never tried using Prospects or if you've never tried to do your own open thing before, it doesn't need to be a book. You know, you don't need to set your goal to be, I need to have this book done by the end of the year. If, if, if I've done a good job today of showing, hey, this is actually, this looks to me like something I can, you know, log in and try out. That's, that's all that I have, you know, I've done my job for the day. And I hope that these slides will hopefully, at, you know, some, somewhere down the line, will will be great resource for you to refer back to. I'm so glad you said that, Amy, because, um, you know, I think I've done a lot of work in, in helping people start down the OER pathway as well. And mm -hmm. it can seem so challenging mm -hmm. and, um, you know, so many things to understand the licensing and the accessibility and whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it really does start with that kernel um, to just try to move to something different in your own practice as an educator. I think that's so important to, to stress. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you agree. <laughs> or I'm ra rather, I'm glad I agree. <laughs> so if you are, you know, if you want to know what Prospect does, if you're interested in me um, and who this person is, you can email me, you can tweet us, or you can check us out on the website. Uh, and that's a little bit about me so that you don't think I'm a ghost after I leave the session. Um, and that's all I have for the slides. So I'll head into uh, showing you a little bit about the Prospects directory and telling you how you can use this in, in, in Prospects. Uh, by and large. Um, I also want to sort of go off of what Nate was saying just now about um, the aspect of it seeming very daunting. Uh, I have a lot of, as the customer success manager, I have a lot of conversations with uh, administrators and faculty members and quote unquote OER champions uh, about using Pressbooks and also about getting started in open. And I, the reason I, I, I covered this particular thing about remixing and finding OER is that because people find the prospect of writing a whole book from scratch so daunting, oftentimes what uh, these administrators at these institutions do is they tell the person, they tell whoever's interested but finds it daunting to go onto a repository of open books and find something that interests you and see what they've done. Because a lot of the time with an open license, you can do what is called clone onto Pressbooks, where you can create an entirely new copy of that book onto your Pressbooks network and remix that book from there. So I'll show you what that looks like now. Um, but before that, I want to show you the Pressbooks directory. Um, and uh, there's a bunch of different books on here in different languages. I would recommend, oh, I don't know if someone's already linked to the directory, but I'll do that here. And uh, you can have a look at this yourself. Oh, my mouse is loading. There we go. Oh, just one second. My mouse is really struggling over there. Um, so on the left-hand side, you'll see a variety of different filters. Uh, you know, if you teach math, go look at math. Uh, for RISA, if you're teaching chemistry, go look at chemistry. Um, <laughs> I'm sure you have already, but uh, you can look by subject. If you work, if you're affiliated with an institution and you want to see the books that your institution's done, then you can go look for their institution. There's a bunch here um, and a bunch of different collections and last updated and languages as well. There's a bunch of books uh, here. And, uh, and yeah, so really explore. You can have a look um, by yourself. And now, because we, I want to save about 15 minutes for questions at the end, I have 15 minutes for a demo. So, on Pressbooks, here I am. Uh, I'm at my test university. Um, we have educational features for educational institutions who use Pressbooks. So I'm just here and I'm going to log in. Actually, rather, I've already logged in. I'm just going to head to the dashboard. And on the front, I see that I can clone a book. So I can create a new book from scratch or I can clone a book but for today's purposes uh, to really lower that barrier for you getting started with your project. I want to show you how simple it is to clone a book. So on the directory, there's a book that I, uh, that I really like, um, and it is called, it is, I believe, from uh, the University of Saskatchewan. And so I'm just going to look right down here. And they have, I have to look for it now. 
<laughs> it used to be in the collection above and I realized that they must have changed it today. Uh, and they have this amazing book called Northern and Indigenous Health and Healthcare. And it's this excellent book that they produced in association with a bunch of different organizations. It's a healthcare book solely dedicated for Northern and Indigenous healthcare, which is super important. And up here, I see that they have a CCBY NC license, which means that so long as I do not sell this book, I'm able to remix it. And I have to, those are my two considerations. I have to attribute the original authors and I cannot sell the book. Um, uh, both of which I uh, fully intend on adhering to. And let's say that I want this on my network. Uh, and a lot of a question I get frequently is, if this book exists in the University of Saskatchewan, what's the point of creating a copy of it? Well, not only does it mean that your students can have a localized place for your institution where they can refer to the book so that you know, you're not outsourcing the book, you're not saying, hey, go to this random university's website to view this book, you can bring a copy of that book onto your institution's network. So that's the first reason why. And the second reason why is that with an open license, you can remove chapters, you can add chapters, you can edit chapters. There's a lot you can do there. So uh, it really does mean that you can reuse the book to your liking. And to clone this book, it's super simple on Pressbooks. Like I said, it's said to go to clone a book. And all I have to do is copy the link of the original book. And then I'm going to say, um, uh, let's say I'm going to give it um, Northern Healthcare. And I'm just going to leave this optional. So I'd leave this blank, sorry. And it will just bring over the title of the original book for me. And what this will do is it will create an exact copy of that book for me. Cloning just means it, it takes a little bit of time, obviously, because it's creating the exact copy of that book onto my network. So it takes a little bit of time. So for the sake of time, for, for, to, to not bore you as the bar is loading, as it clones, I've already done that process. And now when I go onto the book, you'll see that I have an exact copy of that book now on my network. And it brought over the exact license, um, all of the authors, uh, the, the, um, the the author's names and all of the parts within it and when i go on to let's say a chapter about educating healthcare providers in the yukon the book looks identical it brought in all of the text boxes all of the text and if it had images videos h5p activities other embedded content it will all bring that over for me as well and down here um, you can see that all of the data as well has been uh, you'll see that the license of the original the original authors has been brought in as well. So I have I have not touched this book at all, and you'll see that the exact copy has been brought in, um, which is really great to see. And from here, I can do a bunch of remixing with this book, like I said, because the license permits me to do so. And to do that, all I'd have to do is go on to the organize module where I could see all of the chapters. So let's say I don't actually need a chapter about food security in Greenland. I can just go to delete that book. Oh, I think I must've clicked it twice. Oh, sorry, I don't know why that's not working right now. Um, rather embarrassing during a demo, isn't it? Yeah. Um, there always has to be something in a live demo, there's, right? Yeah, there's something that's not working in a live demo. It might have to do with my permissions because I'm logged in as my, uh, as my demo account with like zero privileges as opposed right. to my super Pressbooks account. Right. Um, but from here, I can you can see in a previous demo, I've added a test chapter. And you know, if I wanted to add content down here, I could why well, added a Simon and Garfunkel video into a into a book about ind indigenous healthcare. I'm not too certain. But you can add chapters here. If you had another chapter to add for your class, um, you can do so here. You can also add Oh, I'm actually gonna go back there. And I can add different media files. I can add different H5P activities. So H5P activities, like I said, are is interactive content. So um, I'll show you what that looks like in a little bit, but you can really tear this book apart and put it back together as you see fit. Like I said, so I'm, I'm going to sound very um, <laughs> like a broken record at this point, so long as the license permits you to do so. And what's really great about the directory is that you can find different content that you can remix. So in addition to that book and removing uh, chapters and editing the chapters directly within that book and adding your own chapters and writing your own content, you can also bring in content from elsewhere. So let's say I go down here and I'm going to go back to my book and let's say that I'm going to look, uh, look up um, 
health. So let's say I want to filter by um, primary care medicine and uh, healthcare systems and services and personal health and health education. Let's say these are the ones that interest me. And let's say that I find a chapter in this book about clinical procedures for safer patient care. Let's say that there's a chapter in here that I want to incorporate into my Northern and Indigenous health and healthcare book. Then what I can do is come back onto my book that I was at, go to import, and I can import from another Pressbooks book, and I can import from URL. And the Pressbooks importing machine here will recognize this book has a CCBY license. It's uh, it's accessible for me to read, which means that okay, I should be able to import from this book, and it's going to take a little bit of time to load because. Uh, this is a massive book, so it's going to take a little bit of a moment to do so. But once I do so, you'll you'll see all of the chapters here that I should be able to bring in. So let's say I'm interested in, um, uh, you know, bringing in a chapter about pain assessment. Then I should be able to do so from there, and then I can continue to edit that chapter about pain assessment because that chapter is also openly licensed, right? If I go onto this book, I can go down to the bottom and this chapter is licensed with CCBY. So you can continue to edit the book, which is really awesome. So I'm gonna go down here and let's say that I click on this. I'll keep this as a chapter and I will import that selection. It's just gonna import that chapter for me. And once I do so, it will be seamlessly integrated into my book. But let me um, just pause it there, Amy. So mm -hmm. I think you're obviously really good at this. And so, uh just trying to make sure i understand what happened there so you mm -hmm. selected that other book mm -hmm. for import and then it gave you a listing of all its chapters and then you were able to pinpoint just one or you could pinpoint more if you wanted to actually import into your other book yes exactly exactly so this is what i'm and while this is loading i can um i i've had my fair share of morning coffee this morning so i'm sorry so, if i'm speaking a little bit quickly no it's um, great it's, it gives us a good <laughs> overview and then we can ask questions yeah, absolutely. So here you'll see that there's a difference. There's a very distinct difference between what I did to bring in the Northern and Indigenous Health and Healthcare book, and then what I just did now to bring in that one chapter. So to bring in this in this this book to create a copy of this book, the Northern Northern Indigenous Health and Healthcare book, that was a process of cloning, which is creating an exact copy of that book onto my network, but. Uh, after that, I can continue to import content, which is the process in which you can bring in portions and bits and pieces from elsewhere into your existing book. So by doing this, you can sort of create what we at Pressbooks call, jokingly call a Franken book, where you can sort of bring different bits and pieces to really cater to fit your needs. So in my case, what I had just demoed is showing you this idea of having a clone book, and then on top of that, bringing in more CCBOR content from elsewhere to really fit your book to your needs. So from my organized module, now when I head down, oh, where did it go? There we go. So you'll see that my chapter about pain assessment that I brought in from this clinical skills, uh, clinical procedures for safer patient care, that one chapter that I brought in has also now been seamlessly integrated into my clone book. And you'll also see that the original authors have been properly attributed as well. And now when I go to visit my book, down here, you'll see that my pain assessment chapter has been brought in beautifully. And the chapter that I had brought, brought over also looks identical to uh, what I had been expecting. The only thing that looks slightly different is the appearance option of the book um, because there are many different themes to a book and I'll show you what that means in a second where you can change what the book looks like so to follow the rest of the book because you don't want a book that just looks different in one chapter it just formatted to the all of the other chapters that are contained in the book but here what I've shown you is showing you effectively that you can bring in content from many different places to fit your needs which is not something that you can say about your traditional average uh, university or college textbook that you bought, you would buy at the bookstore. So yeah, showing I guess, you that. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say it's. It seems like one of the greatest benefits here too is how carefully it handles the open yeah. licensing of the different components, so that in, in a way you don't really have to worry about that because it's. You really, 
Yeah, you don't because uh, you'll see that when I, I, I cloned the book, if you remember for, for this book, and then I brought in this chapter, the pain assessment book, the chapter of the, uh, the, the pain assessment chapter from the other book, Pressbooks will stop you. If it has an all rights reserved license, Pressbooks will say, you are not allowed to reuse this chapter. So it's really great because there's no chance of you realizing afterwards that you stole, you know, you stole, quote unquote, an all rights reserved contented book. Contented is not a word, but you get the idea. It is now. <laughs> it is now. Yeah, I, I, I made it a verb. Um, so Pressbooks will stop you. So it's really great because the bar for making mistakes is so low, right? Um, uh, there's you, all, all that, you know, people can ask of you is just to try, try it out and see how you find it. And we also have a bunch of documentation online that can help with that as well. Um, so I'll share those uh, uh, in a little bit when, once we get to that aspect. But here you can also really customize your book. So uh, going into the appearance module, this won't change the content of your book. It will just change the way that your book looks like. And you can tell we're all, you know, only nerds work at Pressbooks, which is why all of the, all of the themes are named after authors. Um, but let's say we go to a really popular theme. Do you have a Mary them. Shelley theme? Oh gosh, I, I, that, that would be so awesome if we had. Actually, I'm gonna suggest that to, to someone yeah. on my team and say, Nate, Nate told me to uh, create a Mary Shelley. <laughs> to really right, go let's, with not, let's not make it a demand. <laughs> I might have to demand it of our team. But here now, now that I've enabled this uh, this feature, when I go, uh, or this theme, when I go onto my book, you'll see that all of the content has been preserved, but now it's with different typefaces that suits our Jacob's theme. Um, so yeah, you have so many options to explore here. The best part about Pressbooks is that you sort of have complete freedom, uh, absolutely complete freedom. Uh, we have a privacy policy and it says that we don't control your content, we only host your content. So we provide the platform and we make sure that it's as accessible to use and we make sure that there's the features that you want, uh, but we don't control what you write, we don't control what you can say, you don't have, you, you know, you have all of the editing permissions there, it's your book, you lead it and you get to decide what you do with it. And the other reason why I would ask you, ask that you refer to the directory is not just because you might be looking for that content that you know you might want to remix. It's also a really great place to see how other people have used Pressbooks. So in addition to having, this is one of my favorite books. Um, I like how you have favorites. Filters. You've obviously <laughs> spent a lot of time here. So. <laughs> I have, but this book from UW is this amazing history of art book uh, of, of Jacob Lawrence. And it's this book that um, a bunch of students worked on together. It's a student led OER. And it's just, I mean, look how beautiful this book is. It's its its so gorgeous. And all of these different students wrote their chapters and um, incorporated different elements to the book. And it's just really beautiful. So you have traditional, te traditional textbooks like that, um, but you also have uh, someone, uh, the Colorado, uh, I think uh, the University of Colorado, one of their campuses wrote a, a legal journal that was peer reviewed and edited and it was put on press books. You have really interactive language learning books. You have faculty handbooks that are not very long. You have syllabi that people have written through press books. So regardless of what you want to use it for, there's a lot of options for you and to explore, hey, like this is how I would like to use press books or I would like to use it in a very traditional sense. There's a lot of options that you have and you can, you know, reinvent the wheel and write the whole thing yourself if you have the initiative to do so. And, you know, absolutely, that sounds amazing. But also, you don't have to do that, right? I think we have a very narrow idea of what important accomplished work looks like. And I always love reminding people that remixing a book and localizing it to fit your needs is already a really, really challenging, time-consuming task. So to cut yourself some slack and to recognize that, to do that and to take that first step is huge on its own and, uh, and, to, and to not undermine the work that you're doing. And I hope that my presentation today shows you that this is possible through Pressbooks and that you can do it pretty readily. Um, if you want to, oh, that's not the right place. Uh, there we go, um, Pressbooks. And I spelled Pressbooks wrong. There you go. <laughs> Online casino. Wait, what? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so here is the website to Pressbooks. I linked it in our slides. If you want to try this out, 
you can just go to login. And I'm already logged in, but let me log out so that I can show you. You just have to create an account and you can try creating your own book. The only thing is that on pressbooks.com, because it is not a educational site, you won't be able to clone your own book. So that's the one thing that I wanted to mention. Uh, what you can do is you can try creating a book and importing content into it. Um, so that's the only thing, but we do have a bunch of documentation. Uh, our YouTube channel has a bunch of different resources and where I would recommend that you start is by following. We have a playlist called Fundamentals of Pressbooks. And if you basically want a five minute explanation of what I covered today in 35 minutes, you can start there, sign up for Pressbooks and try it out and see what happens. Actually, so, it's funny uh, what I'm actually hearing from people in the chat and so forth is um, actually not a faster version, but a slower version because I think um, this was great. This is such a great overview of, of all the different capabilities and I'm probably not even done yet. But, um, you know, I think for people who are brand new to this, um, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's just like we were talking before, it's like, what are the very first steps in getting started? Mm -hmm. And you showed how like you can just create an account and, and start mm -hmm. your own book, obviously, which is, is a great way. Um, and, mm -hmm. uh, but I think people would, people are also feeling a little overwhelmed. And so mm -hmm. uh, do some of the videos on the channel also um, kind of just uh, go into very specific parts of the capability. So you could just learn a little nugget about something specific. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, here, I will link it. I Two things. That's a great question, Nate. Um, first thing is that I do monthly webinars. So they're open to everybody and all of you are welcome to come. So I cover everything from start. So how to create a book, how to click on creating a book, how to add users, how to all of the really, really basic things uh, that you would likely want to do on Pressbooks. I do a webinar for them. It's like I said, you can register for them. Um, there's no cost. There's no commitment. If you can't come, no big deal. Um, really low commitment. So if you want to register, I would love to see you there. But if you don't want to attend the live webinar, I have that exact live webinar that's clean all the way through. No one's asking me questions. Um, and I have a link to that right here. And I've timestamped them with all of the different resources. So if you want to know all of the different steps, you can also go onto that. <laughs> to that link and and see that there so i hope both of those are are helpful yeah i'm sure they i'm sure they would be and you know i wish we had time here to like continue on we could go on for hours and hours and probably <laughs> help help people uh, begin projects people have been also bringing up uh, in the comments the rebus community which i know has a close connection to press books um yeah yeah and and they're they're actually interested in like so uh, there's something called an education account in Pressbooks. Um, how does one go about having an education? Yeah, account? that's a really great question. Um, send me an email and I will put you in touch with our, our our sales team and they will be able to provide the education account details. So maybe you could maybe we could understand a little bit more about what it, an education account is. Then is that one? Yeah. An institution yeah. uh, adopts Pressbooks as a whole, or yeah. So there's a couple of different options. So there's the uh, like the freemium option on Pressbooks uh, on Pressbooks.com, um, but you don't get any of the access to the educational features. And what I mean by that is, let me just share my screen. Um, so all of the books on the directory are from educational sites. So if I do go back to here. Um, the download this book option, the uh, all of the interactive components, so H5P activities, hypothesis, um, getting personalized support, all of that is not possible through Pressbooks.com, which is the site where I told you to go to to try out Pressbooks. The educational option can be done in two different ways. Firstly, your institution purchases a Pressbooks network. So uh, they, your institution gets their own Pressbooks domain and they, you get to post all of your books through there. Um, and then the other option is just for faculty authors. So individual licenses for faculty. Um, obviously the costs there very dramatically because having an institutional network is different than one single author. Um, but uh, the faculty, if you get in contact with me and if you're interested in that, I'm happy to put you in touch with our very lovely team who will be able to answer more of your questions uh, on that front and exactly what the specific offerings are. And I think in my experience with Pressbooks too, 
you know, it may, that all may have sounded suddenly like a software vendor or something, but Pressbooks is, has a very unique position in this world, I think. And then, um, you know, the reason why some things may eventually cost some money is to keep the project sustained, right? Um, and so it, Pressbooks has done so much valuable work to, to make OER. I mean, it's been a platform that's really made OER possible across, um, across you know, the whole world, actually. And the, the interconnections that you guys have been able to develop so that it is possible, for instance, to, I believe, import a book from any Pressbook instance that has, has it openly published, at least, right, into your mm -hmm. own usage. That's such a powerful tool that doesn't really mm -hmm. exist in any other in any other network of, of OER that's so widely used. So, mm -hmm. you know, people may be somewhat blanching at the idea of, of cost, but I will point mm -hmm. out that that it, it that this is the way that an organization like Pressbooks can sustain its work and continue to innovate it and make it and make it better. Those are some very kind words. Thank you, Nate. <laughs> well, I, I have spent many, many a day in the trenches of organizations that um that haven't <laughs> had a good sustainability plan. So I like to see it. Hey, I see that Maya has her hand up. Hey, Maya. <laughs> Hey, hey, so, so nice happy to see, to see you. you. All. So happy to see you too. Um, I, I, I want to piggyback on that question around, you know, having the sort of institutional account um, versus the single author account. And I'm wondering if you do go with your institutional account, do you have to like use their resource, like their copyright, their copywriters? their publishing, like, do you have to go with all of their things or is it just going to be parked? Is whatever you create just going to be parked on their network? I guess that's, that's a, really, a little bit unclear to me. And the reason really why I'm question. asking yeah. is because, you know, people like me, adjunct or contingent faculty, we're moving around constantly, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so what yeah. happens to that sort of affiliation, but also network parked and also institutional account, like, that. Can you yeah. just talk about that yeah. a little bit? That's a really, really great question. Surprisingly, one that we've never gotten before. Um, yeah, <laughs> really odd. Um, so that, that's a really awesome question. So when we, I really hate using any any sort of terminology related to sales or sell because I'm not on the sales team. So <laughs> pardon the fact that I'm about to say sell, but when we work with universities and we sell a network to them, it's at their discretion what they decide to do. So for example, let's say you're adjunct at UW and uh, they, UW, has their own, we, UW has their own Pressbooks network. Um, they decide how the usage is allowed at their institution. Um, that's different if you're a faculty author, if you're, if you're buying that one single license, I think you have far more flexibility because you have to adhere to the, the Pressbooks privacy policy and obviously, um, you shouldn't make your own institution mad for whatever reason, but <laughs> but the the limitations of the network there is none. But when you go on to for the whole institution's network, they oftentimes have their own terms of use and their own terms of service that you have to follow. That said, for example, let's say you are an adjunct at UW and you leave UW to go to, to I'm thinking about UCLA. I don't know why I chose that, but <laughs> randomly, let's say you just you decide to go to UCLA. And let's say that UW has a policy that says, if you leave UW, you cannot have your book on the UW network. Send us an email. We are so, con we are more interested in keeping your open content that is accessible for other people to access. We're not gonna hound you down and say, you're no longer part of UW and they said you can't keep your book, well then get it out of here. You know, we're so much more concerned with having that content on the web for people to enjoy. So um, to that question, I would say, Unfortunately, yes, there are limitations of the institutions that you're a part of, but we want to keep your amazing content. And if that's the case, then email us and we, we, will, we would love to find a way to keep it somewhere on the directory, somewhere on the web. Hopefully that's helpful. <laughs> that was a very long-winded answer, but. That's great. And I'm wondering, do other folks have questions or comments? While Amy is still here. I realize this is this has been a whirlwind tour. Um, Pressbooks is such a deep and powerful platform that uh, you know this is this is just a taste. To hopefully, get you inspired and 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 started. 
Rissa's mind is blown from one chemistry to another. She has a reaction inside her head, I think, with her chemistry references, Amy. I'm just so excited. I love meeting other uh, STEM folk in the in the open world. So it's so lovely to meet you, Rissa. <laughs> yeah, I just, I, I'm like, I, I'll need this. I'll need to rewatch this about four times. Thanks, though. <laughs> You might also tune into that that YouTube channel that Amy um, posted in. <clears throat> so we will, one thing that we're doing um, for all the MyFest sessions, at least in the open learning journey, is we'll be posting all the resources from each session. And I see that Amy has openly licensed her slides, so that makes it easy to know. We don't even have to ask her if we can use them. Um, yeah, yeah, you can just go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. That's what Creative Commons licenses are for, right? Um, exactly. <laughs> so we'll be posting the slides and the recordings once we have them published out on YouTube, uh, as well as any other links that were shared in chat and so forth. You know, I thought one thing that sort of came up, and this is a bit of a side note, but, um, you know, when Amy, you talked about how, um, you know, remixed works kind of have the nickname around press books of Franken books. And then Maha, I think, chimed in with, well, why not quilts? And then there was, uh, I think it was <gasps> maybe, maybe Maya who was oh. like kaleidoscopes. And so a lot of different metaphors started to go around. And I, I just actually, I want to make another plug for Franken book because I think um, people misunderstand the monster uh, that calling, even calling him the monster is, is already yeah. a misunderstanding. <laughs> And so I think there's there's actually room to see uh, the word Frankenbook as a kind of positive uh, view mm -hmm. of a book as opposed to a negative one. So mm -hmm. I, you know, just a Franken, Frankenstein is one of my favorite novels ever. Um, mm -hmm. I posted a link in the uh, chat there to the Frankenbook project, which uh, wow. is a really interesting literary exploration of, of Frankenstein work. So anyway, that's maybe my own little... Uh, pet peeve but uh, I love oh, I love awesome. references to Frankenstein so I don't think you guys should necessarily stop calling it calling them Franken books but maybe there are other metaphors that everyone could use as well yeah where I can always say it's a positive connotation which is which is really awesome this is this is great I I think the first person who coined that theme was our our marketing director and she she loves books so I, I feel like I should I should give it a more positive rap because I, I highly <laughs> doubt she she meant to have a negative connotation with us <laughs> Wait, Maya's back up with her hand up again. Only to draw attention to, I think there was, um, while I was talking about my situation, I think there was a question in the chat that I'm not sure got answered. Um, sure. And I think it was about uh, opportunities or what options are available to independent scholars. Um, and I'm wondering perhaps if Amy, you might be able to talk uh, talk about what opportunities there are um, for folks who may not be part of an institution or have an affiliation with an institution. Sorry, you cut out there just for a second. Could you press me repeat your question? Yes, it's it's not mine. I'm actually uh, uh, oh, yes. speaking um, and perhaps actually Heather, you, you, would you like to perhaps create this or frame the question? Yeah, so um, in addition to being uh, an employee at the University of Texas, I'm also a member, I think, still a member of the Coalition of- Hey, Heather, actually, there's a lot of background noise. <laughs> there's oh, some sort of buzz. Yeah, but it's my fan. I'll put it in the chat. Okay. It's my fan. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think what Heather was getting at is just like, you know, when you're an independent scholar and you maybe going back to that sort of, you know, the adjunct faculty case as well. And you may not always have an affiliation with a single institution, or maybe you have you don't have an affiliation with any institution, right? I see how they're nodding. And so like, just, you know, what's what's the best, best pathway for an independent scholar to be able to take advantage of the educational tool set? Oh, absolutely. Um, well, I, my answer still doesn't, uh, hopefully you weren't expecting something radically different because you don't have to be affiliated with an institution to use Pressbooks. Um, and uh, there are, there's options for you. A, a lot of people actually started, and especially if cost is a barrier, a lot of people started their book on pressbooks.com actually, and just decided not to use educational features. And then if they had funding, they decided to upgrade to the educational version. So there's no limitations for you there. And we don't discriminate based on whether or not you are or not affiliated with an institution. That's that's not at all. We, we wanna make sure that all education, all educators, regardless of, where you're involved from or what you're, what kind of work you're doing, you have the option to create your own content as well. And all of our webinars, our listservs, all of the community avenues that we provide, we try to make it as open as possible. Um, so long as you're doing 
educational work period, it doesn't matter your affiliation with any sort of institution. So I, I wanna make that perfectly clear. I think we just call them educational features, but institutions and educational features are not the, like they, they're, they're, they live in different camps in our brain. Um, I wonder, you know, Heather said that she's a member of um, the Coalition of Independent Scholars and not to speak for her, <laughs> I feel bad because your fan is, is interfering here, but I'm just wondering if, Heather, would it make sense for Pressbooks to try to work with that coalition to maybe offer um, something that the that all the members of the coalition could use? Maybe there's an institutional sort of offering that that coalition can sort of steward on behalf mm. of independent scholars. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 really awesome. Yeah, and if if um, if the coalition of independent scholars are interested in having your you know your own sort of press books network, um, yeah, absolutely get in contact with us and uh, and and yeah, we'll we'll see we'll see what we can you know work together on. Um, and, that also seems yeah. like something that could be um, grant worthy. Just absolutely. in my book, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if, if, yeah. Um, yeah, it just seems absolutely. like independent scholarship uh, doesn't always have, you know, the kind of support that it needs, probably. Um, I'm not sure who might be a good funder for that, but if there were infrastructure that could support independent scholars and Pressbooks was part of that, then I could see mm -hmm. it coming together. Um, maybe, Heather, if you if you know the organizers behind, uh, behind the coalition, uh, might be able to connect, make a connection there. Yeah, thumbs up, yay. Problem solved. Well, maybe not. We don't know. <laughs> Great. Well, this is, you know, we've actually reached the end of our time here. And I know other people probably have things to go, including probably Amy, who probably has another meeting coming right up. Um, I really this is my boss. It's okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Forget that. Is it Hugh? It is, yes. Oh, <laughs> uh, we'll just tell Hugh that I that I'm more important and he can wait. Um oh, I love you. I've had <laughs> I've had he's an old friend of mine. So yeah, uh, say oh, hi lovely. to him for me. Um, I know. At any rate, uh, I really appreciate you coming here today. Uh, and um, thank you for both the really informative slides that um, have a lot of great links in them, as well as the presentation, which will make the recording available, as we said, um, and any links that people have shared. So thank you so much for coming, Amy. Oh, thank you so much for having me. This was so fun and everyone was so engaging. And I hope you, I hope I can see you again in the future. And Nate, uh, congratulations on your new position. I meant to, I meant to mention at the start, but that's so exciting. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I, uh, I, I try not. I don't really have my Creative Commons hat on here, so uh, try not to stress that part of it. <laughs> next time, I'll, so I'll, I'll definitely keep an eye over it. <laughs> okay. Yes, I'll, right. I'll get my hat on next time. Thank you so much, everybody.